All right, today let's talk about the five reasons that you probably just shouldn't move to Fort Lauderdale. And I can promise you, number one, you probably didn't even think about. But before we get started, my name is Joe. I'm your South Florida realtor. So if you have any questions about moving to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, pretty much anywhere from the Florida Keys all the way up to Palm Beach, I'm your guy. Anything that you need, I'm here for you. But let's jump right into it. So number five, we have the weather. I can promise you Fort Lauderdale is freaking hot. Not only is it hot though, it's also humid. And that humidity is like the deal breaker. You can go outside at midnight, you can be walking the dog and just sweat your butt off and you have to take another shower. Not to mention in the summer, it's just brutal. Anywhere between, I would say 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m., you just don't wanna go outside. Like I remember football practices and being out there and just dripping. And you're not even doing anything. You just be standing there dripping. Another thing is the rain. Every day from like the spring to like midway through the fall at four o'clock, I can promise you without a doubt, it's gonna rain. You'll look at the news every day and they're gonna say 50% chance rain. You'll be like, all right, well, I know around four o'clock it's gonna rain. On top of that, we do get hurricanes here and there. So that is something to be aware of, but we always have an advance notice. So it's not something to be concerned about, but it's also good to have a generator and just a plan in place just in case but it's not something that's a major concern, I would say. And number four, we have lots of people. And not just locals, but people from all over. So there's really three groups of people that you'll see here in Fort Lauderdale. Number one is the seniors. So let's be realistic. People are coming to Florida and they're retiring and they're living here and just enjoying the sunshine and getting away from the cold in the north. So they'll be here. Number one, they don't want to drive. Number two, they drive super slow. So be prepared for that. Um, that's something all of Florida has for the most part, but you'll see it a lot and predominantly in South Florida just because of not only the climate, but just everything that South Florida has that's very different from the rest of Florida. The second group is seasonal people. So these are people either from up north or other countries that come to Florida during the winter time. So they're escaping the cold and coming to Florida and enjoying the sunshine. I mean, Let's be realistic. Who wouldn't want to go to the beach or be on a boat in the winter or on Christmas Day or during Hanukkah, something like that? I mean, you can't really blame them. But same thing, they kind of take up a lot of traffic. Things are moving slow. They're looking around. They're just doing their own thing. They're not really in a rush. So if you're in a rush, you're going to have to plan in advance with that one. And then the third group is tourists. So I think the biggest group of tourists would be spring breakers. And don't get me wrong, the spring break in Fort Lauderdale is off the chain. It's ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. But if that's not your scene, it can be kind of annoying. So I would avoid at all costs anything from, I would say, federal east to the water and anywhere from pretty much 595 up to probably about Pompano area. Everything west, you're, you're pretty good. So from there, that kind of ties into our number three topic, and that's the traffic. So there is constantly traffic. No matter what time you go out, I can promise you that you're gonna sit in bumper to bumper and it's gonna take you almost double what Google Maps or Apple Maps tells you to get there. So just plan ahead of time. You have to avoid 95 pretty much anywhere from the commercial exit up to about most likely 595, but that Las Olas exit and the sunrise exit are god awful, especially during rush hour. I would say the five o'clock rush hour is much worse than that of the morning one. So if you can, try to avoid it. Also try to avoid A1A and federal. For some reason, everyone on federal just drives like five to 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. So you're just sitting there and just taking you twice as long as it should. But here's the secret to getting around. No one's gonna tell you this one, take Dixie. Now don't ruin it for everyone else, but if you can go on Dixie and get to your, we gotta go a little bit faster, go ahead and do it. I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> so number two, we have, there's no sports teams. Well, technically, Inter-Miami plays in Fort Lauderdale, but that's just for right now until they get their whole gargantuan stadium built down there in Miami. But none of the sports teams are actually that far. I would say probably the heat of the furthest. They're about, with traffic, 45 minutes, because it's about, I'd say, 26, 27 miles from downtown Fort Lauderdale to the arena but they're about the furthest team. And then I guess the Marlins would be right around the same thing, just because you got to hop on the highway in 95 and 
all that Miami traffic. So anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour for both the Heat and the Marlins. The Florida Panthers play in Sunrise, so they're about 30 minutes away. You just hop on 95 and then 595, and you're right there. They're not too far. Then we have the Dolphins play at Hard Rock Stadium. So that's about 35 minutes, and it's an easy drive because, I mean, no one's really going out there. It's in Miami Gardens. It's not technically Miami, Miami, so it's a little bit easier to get to, but there's still a lot of traffic, if you get what I'm saying there. Okay, and the number one reason you probably might not want to move to Fort Lauderdale is if you don't like the water. So let's be realistic. Fort Lauderdale is the yachting capital of the world. So if you don't like boats or being on the water at all, it's probably not the city for you. I mean, everything to do with Fort Lauderdale does revolve around the water in some way, shape, or form. So the New River actually borders like all of downtown. So a lot of that is bars, restaurants, shopping right there on the water. And it's just more for the vibe and the ambiance than anything. But it's not to say that it's not nice because you do get a little bit of a breeze from it. But things like the water taxi, paddle boarding, it's not a whole lot of people kayaking because it'd just be a little too choppy in the intercoastal form. Um, what else is there? Boating, just in general. And it's just a lot of fun to be out there on the water. It's just completely different feel from the beach. And let's not forget about the beach. I mean, Fort Lauderdale Beach is beautiful and people come from all over. I mean, look at the spring breakers. They're there for the beach. But if you go on a boat in Fort Lauderdale and just in Florida in general, it's a completely different experience. Like there's two different sandbars. When you go, you're taking the intercoastal south, right before you get to 17th Street and you're like meeting the mouth of the New River, there's two sandbars and people are hanging out there, just partying, having fun. I mean, it's still family friendly at the same time. People are playing catch, playing frisbee, anything you want to do, but it's completely different from going to the beach. And if you've never experienced something like that, I highly suggest you do. So at the end of the day, I mean, Fort Lauderdale is great. It's an awesome place to live. And if you could deal with all these, 100% move there. I mean, you really can't go wrong with it. And if you need any help, my name is Joe, obviously your South Florida realtor. And if you have any questions about living in Fort Lauderdale, living in South Florida, or just living in Florida in general, I'm happy to help in any way that I can.